Shalom, brothers and sisters. This week, I want to talk to you about Lehi. I want to start off by reading a scripture in the Universal Book of Mormon, 1 Nephi 1, 1. For behold, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto my father, yea, even in a dream, and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Lehi, because of the things which thou hast done. And because thou hast been faithful and declared unto this people the things which I have commanded thee, behold, they seek to take away thy life. And it came to pass that the Lord commanded my father, even in a dream, that he should take his family and depart into the wilderness. And it came to pass that he was obedient to the word of the Lord, wherefore he did as the Lord commanded him. And it came to pass that he departed into the wilderness. And he left his house and his land of inheritance and his gold and his silver and his precious things and took nothing with him save it were his family and provisions and tents and he departed into the wilderness. I've talked before about the word Mormon meaning wilderness and the idea that the word wilderness in Hebrew means the mouth of God and how we are called to go into the wilderness. And I want to talk about that a little bit more today. I guess you could say this is a part two type video. One of the things I always found interesting growing up in the Salt Lake City Church was this idea that missionaries went out with a copy of the Book of Mormon and they said, here, read this and come and join my church. I was sent out, called to go and tell you about this book. And once you read it, you'll want to join this church with us. And yet when you read the story it's not about joining a church. It's not about becoming a member of a church. It's about a man who was called to leave and go out into the wilderness with his family and leave all of his worldly things behind. This seems to be in strict contrast to what I was taught growing up missionaries were calling people to do. Now, to be fair, I think the reason why churches exist, they are organizations, is to grow themselves. They get people to get involved, to create a community, and then to grow that community. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. At the same time, I think that the purpose of the Book of Mormon is to call us away from the worldliness and the way that the world does things and invite us to do something new. And once you create a system of conformity, it seems that you're rejecting the larger message of the Book of Mormon. Because the Book of Mormon doesn't tell us to conform. It invites us to come to Jesus Christ. And over and over and over again, the way that the Lord is teaching us is through the example of people being called out into the wilderness to go away from what everyone else is normally doing, whatever tradition is, and doing something new. And in that perspective, it's a very progressive book. And I don't mean that in a political sense. Please don't politicize my words here. I'm merely saying that God is telling us to constantly look forward. We have to look at the past. That's why we read the scriptures. But why? So we can interpret the present and build a way forward. And that is progress. Therefore, it is a very progressive way of looking at things. I find it very interesting that Joseph Smith was very progressive. He ordained women. He had mixed race congregations. He ordained black men and those sent those black men out to preach. And actually, black men in the original church preached to white congregations. At that time, that was radically progressive. James Strang was very similar. He encouraged women to wear pants as a sign of progress forward. He also ordained women. Sidney Rigdon ordained women. So we have a lot of progressive traditions in the Latter-day Saint movement. 
But that's not to say that, that we are solely progressive because we're also a restoration. We're trying to restore what came before us. We want to take those building blocks, that solid foundation that came before, build upon that and progress forward in Christ. It's really hard to do that when we're not permitted to follow the Spirit and we have to go by a set of rules and guidelines created by human beings to allow us to conform to a religious organization. That's one of the reasons why in the fellowship we're more of an ecumenical movement. We don't tell you you have to leave your church. And to those that do not have a church, we are a non-denominational movement. We aren't going to tell you to conform to a strict set of guidelines. We do have rules and restrictions to protect the most vulnerable among us, namely children. But we don't tell you how to worship. We don't tell you what to believe. We have a series of articles of faith, and in them we tell, we say point blank, that we believe in allowing people to worship who, what, and how they may. That includes us ourselves as Mormons, as Latter-day Saints. We're not going to tell you how to do it. We're going to encourage you to read the scriptures and figure out what works best for yourself. Now, I want to be very clear here that this idea and this concept isn't for everyone and that that's okay. Everyone is welcome in the fellowship of Christ. That's why we're a fellowship and not a church. Because we want to encourage everyone to come and worship together, even if you belong to another organization, even if you already belong to a church. Because that's how we learn and grow. We take these different concepts and ideas and we introduce them and the Holy Spirit will testify to us what we need to learn to grow along our spiritual path. And that's a very different way from what organized religion does, where it says we have set up this set of guidelines and if you follow them, you'll be happy. But if you don't, you'll be miserable. And if you really don't, we're going to kick you out. In the fellowship, we don't kick people out because that's the whole idea is we, we want people to figure out what works for them Tell us what it is, and if it works for somebody else, that's awesome. And if it doesn't, then that's fine too. It's just a way of saying, okay, well, we tried this, and it didn't work for me, so what will? And when that person finds that thing, they get excited, they share it, and bam, growth. There is no growth in a vacuum, and there is no growth in conformity. There's only conformity. How can you grow if you're trying to figure out how to be somebody else and not how to be who the Lord has called you to be. So with that in mind, I want to ask a couple of questions and I want you to see if any of these questions resonate with you. Do you identify with any of these ideas? Do you feel particularly spiritual? Are you a spiritual person? Do you have a larger combination of interests. If someone says, what are you into? Is it hard to tie it down to just one or two things? Are you someone that has had spiritual experiences? And do these experiences provide you guidance in how to live your life? Do you find yourself being more of a bridge or ambassador when you meet people from different backgrounds? Do you feel called to do something? Whether you know what that thing is or not, do you feel called? Are you a student of life? Are you constantly wanting to learn from the people who are not exactly like you? You see the differences in people and you want to learn from them. When you're in a group of people, do you find yourself meeting the needs, maybe even being a facilitator of the group? Not in a way that helps conformity, but that helps people get along. When others speak, do you not merely wait for your turn to talk, but are you truly listening and trying to get beyond the words that are being spoken and trying to hear spirit to spirit? Do you feel in tune with the Lord or are you trying to be in tune with the Lord, seeking guidance and inspiration? Are you constantly seeking new ideas in your life, whether that be spiritually, in your hobbies, in your career? You're constantly looking at the things you're interested in, 
to try to figure out what's new. How can you move forward and enhance what you know? So what is this list and what does it have to do with Lehi and his family? I've been doing this for about nine years now. And I can tell you that the overwhelming majority of people that I have met, they fall into the categories on this list. We're all wilderness walkers. The Lord has called us into the wilderness. And the biggest problem that I see, the biggest temptation, if you will, that Satan puts upon us is he's constantly trying to tell us that we're walking this alone. We live in a world with what? 8 billion people? Brothers and sisters, we are not alone. We do not need to feel lonely. The Lord wants us out there walking together. Does that mean that we need to organize and become some big church? No, of course not. We can't be wilderness walkers and then try to create a church of conformity. It doesn't make any sense. But what we can do, what the fellowship can do, is we can create a rest stop. You need a place to stay? We're your campground. Pull up your tents. Pull up your RV. Welcome into one of our cabins. Take a load off. Rest for a while. Teach us what you know. Share with us your story. Give us hope from your journey. And let us bring light and hope to you as well. Listen to our journey. Hear what we have been through. And together, we can testify to another. We can build one another up. And when the Lord calls you to move on, I'm going to tell you right now, the fellowship isn't the only campground out there. The Lord has set up other spots. And he will send you where you need to be to get the light of Christ and to be a light of Christ to those people. Stay here as long as you need. Move on as soon as you're ready. That's why we can't be a traditional church. That's why we have to be a fellowship. You'll always be welcome when you need a place to rest. And we'll always understand when the Lord moves you on to somewhere else. And I think that's really important. Because again, Satan wants you to think that you're alone. And that's a lie. So looking at Lehi, I want to use his example here to let you know that sometimes we're called into the wilderness. That doesn't mean that we're called to leave our churches behind. I want to be very clear here that I'm not trying to encourage people to walk away from whatever religious organization you belong to. Because the Lord may be calling you to stay there but also come and journey with us in the wilderness. And you can do both. Lehi sent his sons back to get the plates of brass. Yes, we need the scriptures. But he also got Zezrom. He sent him to get who? Ishmael and his family. We can't be wilderness walkers and just ignore the entire rest of the world. And I think there's a reason why the Lord calls certain people to be wilderness walkers and to stay in their churches. Because there are other wilderness walkers or potential wilderness walkers there and they need to know that they're not alone and that it's safe to explore in the wilderness. And the Lord will connect us. So please don't think that this is me calling people to leave their churches. I'm absolutely not doing that. What I'm doing is I'm saying When you're on your journey, if you stay in your church, you may feel alone because you're not really a conformist. But you still feel called to be there. And and that's the way I was for a very, very long time in the LDS church. There were many times when I prayed to the Lord and said, hey, am I really supposed to be here? Because I don't fit in at all. And until I met and married Christine, the Lord was like, no, you need to be here. And I will tell you point blank, I'm convinced the reason why was because I was supposed to meet and marry Christine. And that's part of it. We have to be there to support one another wherever that place is. Whether it's in an organized church, in a fellowship, rest stop, or anywhere else along the path. So brothers and sisters, if you need a place to stop and rest, the fellowship is here for you. 
You can stay here as long as you like. If you, if the Lord calls you to move on, we'll always be here if you need to come back. The real point of my message here is if you're a wilderness walker, you're not alone. You are called to be a bridge builder and a seed planter. And that means that you've got to go wherever the Lord tells you to go. But the fellowship is a fixed spot that's constantly building bridges and constantly planting seeds. And so you know that there is an oasis. You know that there is a rest stop waiting for you when you need it. If this message of hope has helped you in any way, please like the video and share it. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel. It, it really does help get the message out there. We want people to know that they are not alone. Everything in this world seems to be set up to separate people, to divide us. We need more messages that bring people together and not in a conformist way. Not in the way that tells people how to live their lives, but rather that encourages people to come to Christ on their own terms, to meet God where they are, and allow God to change them rather than an organization. If that's something you believe in and you support, you probably want to check out our website, cjccf.org. If you have questions, please feel free to email us, info at cjccf.org. And until next time, shalom, God bless.